Thank you. It's okay how it works. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for Garage for an invitation. Uh, my name is Vladislav Shapovalov. I'm a visual art, I'm a visual artist and researcher. My main interest uh, is the relationships between political ideas and the visual field, between political imaginations and pictures, representations and visual memory that political projects are living and how do we see these visual artifacts today. My artistic research is titled Image Diplomacy and investigates the specific functions on the image and the system of political culture. The research intends to bring to light certain historical aspects of constructing the political imaginary of the 20th century through exhibition strategies, photographic medium, and films. Although historically grounded, the research is concerned less with how things actually were and more with how they appear in retrospect. The project image diplomacy is based on materials coming from a network of archives located in different countries and containing photographic exhibitions and films sent by all Union Society for Cultural Relations with foreign countries, later known by its Russian acronym VOX. Founded in USSR in 1925, VOX uh, used cultural diplomacy as a tool to break what Lenin had called the conspiracy of silence around the new country and its great social experiment. It strove to produce and uh, disseminate a positive and controlled image of the USSR abroad through exhibitions, films, and travels of artists. All international cultural contacts involving uh, representatives of the Soviet Union and artifacts of Soviet culture. The Soviet exhibition complex operated through networks of influence built up by friendship societies founded in various countries by people sympathetic towards the Soviet experiment. The aim of photo exhibitions and films sent through these networks was to demonstrate the success of another kind of society and foster a desire for a different way of life. By 1957, USSR friendship societies had been established in 47 nations in both West and East, as well as uh, in the non-aligned countries. The photo exhibitions were packed into folders. These contained from 40 to 70 prints, measuring around 30 by 40 centimeters. The exhibitions were comprised of images focused on uh, different aspects of communist life, from the domestic sphere to public life, from the achievements of progress to space explorations, encompassing the whole geography of the USSR and showing the project of internationalism. The images uh, were accompanied by a di diagram indicating the position of each photograph in the exhibition. Following these instructions, anyone could set up the display, making each folder a small, portable, prefabricated photo exhibition in itself. Architecture was presented represented not simply as a matter of monumental symbolism, but as a tool of governance, producing social functions and culture for planning, shaping individuals through their homes and cities. Oops. The images uh, were placing Soviet women simultaneously within uh, the coordinates of classic gender roles, uh, and uh, new ideological considerations. Loving wives and caring mothers were praised as well as success in the professional sphere, oftentimes in professions once considered suitable only for men, as pilots, drivers, or cosmonauts. The photographs aimed to inspire emancipation while revealing the limits of Soviet feminism. Capturing an image of the Earth as seen from space was meant to be the triumphal moment in the competition for a universalist representation. The Soviet photo portrait of the whole Earth was set to expand the communist horizon far beyond the limits of this planet. The Soviet Republic, the Republic's diverse territories populated by culturally heterogeneous communities had to be inscribed into the USSR's modernization project. The galleries sent abroad conveyed the entanglement between the colonizing and modernizing gaze and render the Soviet Union a multinational, resource-rich universe. In its early years, Vox had concentrated its efforts on the advanced capitalist countries. After the Second World War, however, and the beginning of decolonization, the USSR shifted its attention to the new countries of Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. The proletarian internationalism 
of the early 20th century, intent on sparking the fires of revolution, failed to adequately describe relations with the newly emerging countries. So a new term was coined, socialist internationalism. This was meant to describe an alternative globalization project uniting the countries of the second and third worlds. The conscious and methodological reproduction of photographic and filmic self-representations for the Western gaze had an influence on the domestic symbolic order of Soviet visual politics. The images made for an imaginary gaze of the foreign others shaped the ways in which Soviet Union was seeing itself. At the same time, the culture of the West was also changed by the interaction with the culture of the East, but blinded itself to many ways in which the socialist periphery of the second world determined the capitalist metropolis of the first. The influence of visual encounters is never unidirectional. The obsessive need of the West to organize international exhibitions and represent the rest of the world to itself is an indication of this interdependency. The photographic exhibitions were functioning as a contact zone where different cultures, nations, and languages previously separated by geographic and historical disjunctures met. The country from where these photographs started their trip uh, does not exist anymore and they hardly belong to the reality around them. They have successfully traver traversed the break that line between our own moment of failing globalization and period that now appears to have ended, the age of free worlds, a short half century when we imagined that the world was divided into three, the capitalist first, the socialist second, and the decolonizing third world, as if they were the separate planets involved in an elaborate and dangerous orbit one around the other. The odyssey of these materials is a refugium an exile from history, a form of archival resistance against easy recirculation in the memory economy. The virtue of this archive is that it's outside of historical time. Does the past really exist or it is just an another name for ever changing construct we invent to establish relationships with the present day? If so, how projections of ideal communist society can influence our vision of contemporary moment? Or more precisely, which questions do uh, these images ask when they look at us? Image diplomacy is a research project and body of work which grows richer with each new iteration and is formalized as a series of photographic installations, documentary display, and an artist film. My research is not concerned with the reenactments or historical of historically exhibition reforms or fulfillment of the intentions of uh, historical agents. I'm interested in a critical rereading of the images, forms, and media, which are the reflections or representations of political ideas, and at the same time, which are the tools that help to formulate these ideas. Being included into the system of political culture, the images become a precondition, a premise, an instrument, and at the same time, the outcome of the product of the political process. By putting the words medium and exhibition close to each other, I'm not only trying to align exhibition to the idea of medium, in this sense generally understood when speaking about mass media. But I'm trying to stimulate the recognition of an exhibition as a fundamental unit, an act of providing something for public visual consumption, as a fundamental practice of art, and in general of the development of our increasingly visual universe based on predominant Western assumption that seeing is believing. The film image diplomacy will narrate the story of the Soviet Cold War exhibition diplomacy through the documentary and photographic materials remained in different countries of Europe, and combining it with the story of the world tour of the exhibition The Family of Men, nowadays reconstructed in Clairvaux Castle in Luxembourg, and included uh, in the UNESCO Memory of the World list. On a footnote, uh, the, the filming took place in Milan, Bologna, and in uh, Luxembourg. And Family of Men, as I think everybody knows, traveled to Moscow in 59, so the, the, the circle of this exhibition diplomacy has been closed in a way in Moscow. 
The next presentation of the project accompanied uh, with the screening of the film will be hosted at Museum of Modern Art in November in Moscow. The exhibition will be produced by VC Foundation and curated by Anna Ilchenko. The presentation of Image Diplomacy uh, in Italy will open in December at Arge Kunst Bolzano at the exhibition curated by Emanuele Guidi. By using the phrase uh, in the title of my presentation uh, that archives that were never meant to be kept, I'm referring to the current state of these archives and materials. After the dissolution of USSR, the traffic of images was stopped. Almost all uh, of the friendship societies association were closed and disappeared. Thousands of photographs and in this particular case, I'm working with archive uh, from Milan. It's just one association from 25 that been established in the country. I've been working in Austria and in major Austrian cities, uh, even in Innsbruck, there is also archives. So in this particular case in Milan, we're speaking about more than 150 photographic exhibitions and it's more like than 4,000 uh, pictures and about 1,000 film reels. It's feature films, utility films, educational films, science films that now are transferred to Bologna. So all these materials, I mean m most of them, that's just preserved part, but most of them were thrown away. Thousands of reels were destroyed. Obviously materials are decaying also. Uh, many years ago the images went to a journey that continues to this day. While they were traveling, the points on their itinerary have disappeared. The nature of this archive is a travel, the journey not through the space towards certain destination, but in time, in search uh, of the contact with the gaze of spectator. The aim is not to reinscribe Soviet exhibitions into the narrative of art history and historicize them as the exhibition The Family of Man, for example. I think that the, the precarious state of abandonment and, and neglect is indeed a privilege and an advantage that allows to look at this material and work with it differently and hopefully arrive to some interesting results on the intersection of exhibition history, art practice, visual culture studies and, and history. Thanks a lot. Sorry for, 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 for frenetic rhythm. I, I hope that <laughs> it was a fast montage, but I hope that I should. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, if you have questions right now, because uh, Ladislav will so fast, uh, was so fast, maybe somebody has a question already. Oh, there is one question, so. Mm. Absolutely. That, that, that's something that I like. Let's go into specifics. That one. And here we go. How much time do we have? <laughs> well, um, this work is called Opening Titles and uh, it's a remediation because, I mean, when we're speaking about uh, how to look at things, we're speaking, I mean, we saw today a lot of images of storages. And I was thinking, okay, I mean, all these things, they're kept somewhere. And you need to remediate them. You need to, to, sh to show them somehow. And this particular work, it's an open title section from a film reel. So uh, it was a film reel, kind of news reel, uh, sent maybe each month through this network. It was called Around Soviet Union. And the first frames, you have the same title in different languages. It's supposed to be the same title, but indeed they're different. And uh, they're, they're reprinted, I mean, they're remediated, so it's a reprint from 16 millimeter film into photographic medium, because, I mean, we speak about moving image, it's about movement. And the opening titles, it's normally a sequence that disappears immediately. It's something that no one ever remember. It's like a title of the film, and after that you go, so you remember the narrative, but not the, the opening sequence. So I wanted to fix this moment, and I wanted to remediate it in a photographic thing. So photography, it's about memory, it's not about movement. So that, that, that's, that's what means to remediate for me. And this particular frame, because after that I started to think, okay, I mean, apart, apart of the fact that design 
a part of the fact that the title indeed is different in each of the frames and a part of the fact that design is different so when they work with the German font they trying to make it German that's why I'm speaking about imaginary gaze of a western spectator because no one in 58 for example had any idea so French becomes play playful Spanish becomes uh, eclectic German should be German and the, the only mysterious frame for me was that one and I contacted friends of mine in, in Amman and I asked them actually what, what is written there and they told me that the problem is that there is no concept of union in Arabic political thought. So Soviet Union is a kind of meaningless thing. So basically what is written here? Here is written that uh, in the lands, in the Soviet lands, because as we say Arabic countries, they would never use Soviet Union, they would say Soviet lands. That was the way to recollect Soviet Union as a union of republics again, to kind of to gasp this political idea. And that's how it was rendered into the visual media that the, the, the image that just disappears immediately. It's an opening sequence of, of the film. I hope that, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs>